Hi guys, it's Simply Nana with Crafting, Cooking and Sasong and I'm out of breath. <laughs> I just got my home delivery. I did not do a whole video guys because I have so much work to do that I have to um, get to working and I didn't. I just didn't have time to do that video because it would have took me a while to do it. But I just have to make a quick video because um, now that the fall season is coming and the winter season is coming, a lot of supermarkets such as ShopRite, um, which deliver my food today, they would do sales like on a lot of like slow cook um, marinades, you know, canned goods like um, Campbell has also the all the cream of soups which you guys know you can use them for so many different things meatloaf mashed potatoes and stuff they have cans of gravy cans of chicken soup all kinds of soup so this is the perfect time to stock up now for the fall and winter season so they have the Campbell slow cookers which I love on sale two for three dollars so I did stock up on um, a lot of um, different varieties that I like, um, especially the Korean barbecue. So today is the perfect morning because I have a lot of work just to throw something in the um, slow cooker, let us do its thing. We're going to take our buffalo chicken. It's like, a, um, it's a marinade. And then we're going to use about three. I'm gonna wash my chicken breast and then I'm gonna put it in my slow cooker. I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I have my um, slow cooker already on high heat. You can set your slow cooker at whatever temperature you desire. I am going to place, I hope you guys can see. Maybe I'll sit here, stand here. I'm gonna place my chicken breast into my crock pot. So, it's stating in the package that I can add six boneless chicken breasts, which I have four big, bigger pieces, or 12 boneless skinless chicken thighs. So we can add to the, with this packet about two to two and a half pounds um, of the marinade. I have two of these. I don't know if I'm gonna need the two. I'm not at three pounds of chicken. I was at 2.70, I believe. So I should be okay with one packet, but we'll see. If I need the other one, I'll just use it. I bought two of everything, so. Just squeeze all of this out of here. And I love to cook in my crock pot. I told you guys in other videos that I have. I have this crock pot forever. It is so old, um, but it does the job. So I'm just giving the chicken a mix in the crock pot so that all the um, coating mm, smells so good from the marinade. I so this is how my chicken breast look. I just gave it a good mix that way everything is coated. I'm going to get my lid. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give it a cover. And I'm gonna cover this up maybe for the next um, four hours and then I'll come back and check on it. So I have a five pound bag of potatoes. I'm gonna cut these into small cubes. I'm going to boil them in salted water until the potatoes are pretty much um, breaking up. That way it's easier for me to mash. Alright guys, so we're going to use one pack of bacon and this is just the Jimmy Dean thick um, sliced bacon. I wanted a thicker 
bacon for a bigger crunch. Doesn't have to be Jimmy Dean's. This is what they had on sale this week, so this is what I got. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in my um, oven fryer. It's a, oh, let's get that confused. The Power Air Fryer, and um, you can fry yours or stick yours in the oven. I would think um, maybe better in the oven so it's not so greasy on top of your potatoes, but that's up to you. So let me pop these in my oven. Okay, so our potatoes are done. Now we're going to start assembling our casserole. Well, as soon as the bacon's done, yeah. So as soon as the bacon is done, um, actually, we're gonna, our potatoes are done. So at this point, we're just going to start uh, mashing our potatoes and adding all that goodness to it, um, getting it ready so that we can start layering our casserole. All right, my loves, I made my potatoes. Um, they already have cooled down because I had turned them off. I ran to get Gigi from school and now I'm back home. So what I did was I am adding, so what I did was I boiled one cup of just regular, I use 1% milk, but if you like, you can use whole milk, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just one cup I boiled just to warm my potatoes back up. Oh, I'm sorry about that. All right, so I added one cup of hot milk. I'm going to use one, um, <laughs> I'm gonna use one stick of salted butter. I'm using the Hotel Bar brand. Um, as long as it's butter, I guess you can use any brand. Drop that in there. Yes. I should get my potato masher instead. So now I'm just all right with my stove on I'm just going to mash up my potatoes like so. I, I'm not gonna over season these potatoes because we are going to be adding the buffalo chicken to it. And it has its own sauce and it's, you know, spicy, so it, spicy is going to be a little salty. So you don't want to overpower the potato casserole with that. And it's up to you how you want your potatoes to be. If you want them thick, if you want them um, kind of on the, on the creamy side. I like mine on the creamy side. Let me just show you what I opened. So I'm adding one box of cream cheese. I had out um, for a few hours already, so it will soften up. You can use any brand. You can use, a, you know, real cream cheese. It's up to you. So we're gonna add the cream cheese. Oh, let me clean my hands up. Keeping our stove at medium heat, we're just going to blend all of this together. All right, my loves, so to that we're going to add one eight ounce container, so small ones, of cream cheese, and it can be any brand. I need a spoon. And then we're just going to blend all this together.
using that arm power. Mm. Tastes good already. All right, let me get my last little add-on here. We're going to be using some crumbled blue cheese um, chunks. This one says fat free. I don't know. Didn't even realize that it wouldn't matter to me. So I'm going to use maybe a little more than half of this. I want to save a little bit to coat the top of the casserole. So I'm just going to sprinkle this in there. And this is why I say you don't want to over season your potatoes. Uh, you see I haven't added any seasoning. Okay, there you go. At this point, I'm going to turn my stove off. And I'm just giving this a good mix. There we go. tastes delicious, doesn't need anything else. I am going to add a little bit of black pepper though. But honestly, you saw the end, no kind of seasonings. All I added was the blue cheese, which gave it that oh, kick. And then I added some, the cream cheese, the sour cream, and the butter, and the butter salted. Um, and it is delicious. And it's creamy but with chunks, so I want that. When I make mashed potatoes at home, I make sure it's like creamy all the way. This is good with chunks because we're going to have some of that chicken meat that has that um, buffalo sauce, so it, it'll be a good combination. And I'm going to cover this, set it to the side, and I'm going to work on my bacon. I'm just going to crumble it up. My chicken inside of the buffalo sauce has cooked for four hours, exactly four hours and 18 minutes. And you see how it broke apart? That's exactly what I wanted. And you saw I didn't do anything to the chicken breast. I just threw the whole chicken breast in there. I will come check on it and towards the end, stuck my fork and it was tender and I just took it apart. Okay, it's a little steamy, but our buffalo chicken is done, tender, as you can see. That piece I'm after to break up, but it's ready to go. I'm going to let this cool down, then we're going to start assembling our casserole. Okay, guys, here's my bacon after I took it out the air fryer, and now I'm going to let it cool down. Then I'm just going to give it a rough chop and take it over to my mashed potatoes. All right, guys, so I'm going to spread my potato on the bottom of this pan, not all of it. I want like half of it on the bottom of the pan. And I took half of my bacon and I mixed it in with my potato. All right, now we want to spread this evenly, like so. Now I'm going to take my chicken breast that we made in the crock pot with that buffalo chicken. And we want to just put it on the top of these potatoes. We don't want to push them in, just kind of lay them on the top. Like so.
And with my buffalo chicken, I didn't add anything extra but what was in that packet. My oven is preheating so that we can put this bad boy in there as soon as we're done. Okay. Now we're going to take some ranch, right? Because was buffalo chicken without the ranch. And we're just going to drizzle a little bit on it. We're not going to go crazy. And just drizzle a little on there like so. Then to that, we're going to add some Mexican cheese. Or you can add the cheese of your choice. I like the Mexican cheese with this. I just like their blend of, of cheese. We're going to sprinkle some on the chicken. We want to leave enough cheese so that we can put some on the top. This is great. Just like that. Okay, let's get our mashed potatoes again. We're going to finish off our... Um, our mashed potato, we're going to finish covering the top of our casserole with the remaining mashed potatoes that we have left in our pot. Making sure that the top is um, completely covered, your chicken. If you guys want to make a bigger tray of this, um, you can do a big tray just by doubling up the recipe because I've done it before. I've always, whenever I entertain, especially for the holidays when, you know, the kids are coming over and, and kids are picky because I have picky kids too. So um, I always like to make our traditional, you know, dishes that us adults, we love and appreciate, but I always make sure I make at least a couple of dishes. Yes, you can put it put it on the other side. Um, a couple of dishes that are kid friendly, that kids are going to enjoy and they're going to love because you don't want a kid coming over and saying, oh my God, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to like her food. So I always want to cater to everybody. Because I thought it was liquid. I'm just taking the little bit of chicken that was left over. And I'm just going to spread it on the top lightly because I don't want to push my potatoes down to the bottom. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I don't let nothing go to waste. Okay, perfect. to add the rest of our cheese on the top of this so we want to make sure the whole thing is coated this is going to be so good and although this is a kids recipe trust me this is something this recipe is something that goes over well with the thoughts also. So you might want to make a big batch of this because I'm telling you, the adults love it. And it's a good Super Bowl recipe too. Now we're going to get the rest of the bacon. And we're just going to sprinkle it on the top. So. 
There's some big pieces here, so I just want to break those up. Yeah, a lot of people love bacon. Bacon. If you're having people come over there don't eat pork, then don't put the bacon. Just make it without the bacon or do what I do. Um, I always have, like when I, I always do buffet style. And um, I always put like, what has pork, what has seafood. I have these little, um, I have chalk, like these little chalkboard signs. And that's what I use to place in front of the food. Okay, so now we're taking the rest of the blue cheese that we have left over and we're just gonna sprinkle it on top like so. Okay, and that's it. Now we're gonna go to the oven. Have the oven set at 350 degrees. We're gonna put it in there for about 20 minutes. And guys, we're not gonna cover it, okay? We're gonna put it in just like this without covering it. All right, guys, so this is the casserole. We're gonna stick it in the oven at 350. We'll time it and give you the exact um, timing that I had mine in the oven. So we'll be right. Okay, so I actually cooked the um, buffalo chicken casserole for exactly 25 minutes. I could have left it in there longer, but I don't want it to dry up. If you want it more brown, you can turn it up to 400 and maybe do an extra five minutes. Um, mine, I think, is perfectly done. Now I'm going to allow this to cool down. And you can make this in a foil um, tray and just take it, you know, to wherever like this. So you can put it out however you want to do it on your table to be served this way as well. Um, it's something that kids love, kid friendly, it's not spicy at all, has a nice um, taste to it. You can add extra, I, um, I can show you later, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. Sprinkle some more ranch dressing on top, a drizzle. You can drizzle some sriracha on the top as well if you want to serve it that way. Because it actually makes a really good um, party tray for your Super Bowl Sunday and Super um, football parties and stuff like that. So, with that said, I hope that you give this recipe a try. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. Share this recipe with family and friends. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching and happy Blocktober to the next video, guys. Bye. <laughs>